So we are continuing the section 2.4. Yeah, Flannes error theorem. And Coral is uh, about that. And you remember the Flannes error theorem, right? Alpha is a regular curve and curvature is uh, non-zero. Then, what? T prime, we have a matrix form. So T prime, M prime, B prime, that is uh, zero, minus curvature, zero, and torsion, zero minus torsion, zero, and T and B. Okay, so that is Flannes Ayer's theorem. And we have a very important uh, corollary from it. Then we call that is a rank crack. So it's proposed 18 1802. Then another person, I forgot his name, but that person find the solution, right? So alpha is a uh, regular curve. Then kappa H is not, kappa is uh, not zero. Then what? We have a the if and only condition, right? Alpha is a helix, if and only for one. <coughs> uh huh. What ratio? Torsion. Tor uh, torsion to the curvature is a constant. C is a constant. <laughs> So there exists a constant C such that torsion tau is a constant multiple curvature. Okay, so we can prove this one using that. So here is the last one. Last proposition. Okay. So alpha is a unit speed curve. Uh, Lying on a sphere of a radius R and centered at M. So it's a sphere curve. Okay. Then, so alpha is a curve lying on a sphere of radius R and centered at M. Right? Okay. Then, what can you say about the curvature of the curve? We assume the curvature is positive, right? Or equal zero. So, what can you say about the curvature, about that curve lying on a sphere? Might be curve. So, we have a sphere. Okay, then we have a curve. Any curve or circle, whatever, okay? So what can you say about that curvature? Huh? <laughs> Cannot be? Zero, right. 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 <laughs> it's okay to say. Okay. And if torsion is not zero, we can write the curve this way. Alpha is minus m, m is center, then is uh, 1 over uh, sorry, minus rho n minus uh, rho prime sigma b. And here rho is uh, 1 over curvature and sigma is uh, 1 over torsion. So we call this is the radius of curvature, rho, is the radius of torsion, okay? Mm -hmm. The radius is uh, about R, uh -huh. okay, mm -hmm. okay, then we, let's see the proof, okay, why? Let's see this one first, huh? so by definition, we have uh, alpha is minus m is one. Is 
that is the square of magnitude of alpha is minus m, right? So what is that? That is a hmm? R square. R square, okay. <laughs> Radius is square, right? You're right. Okay? Okay. Now let's take the derivative of this expression, this one. So derivative, if you take the derivative, we have a product rule thing. So derivative of this is one. That is a t, right? We have alpha is minus m, and we have the same term. Now leave this one and take the derivative of that. That will be t. So we have two of those, uh, and derivative of r squared is uh, zero, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have uh, in the part of t and alpha minus m that is zero. So that's what we have. Then let's take the another derivative to that. Let's take the derivative one more time to this. <coughs> if you do it, what do you have? T prime, right? The derivative of this and alpha is uh, minus m plus the t and derivative of this t so that is zero then we know t prime is a uh, curvature n so let's replace this one curvature n okay So here is what we have here. Curvature, we take out curvature, and alpha is minus n, and plus t dot is one. <coughs> so what can you say about the, the, the k then? A uh, kappa, sorry, yeah, the curvature. Hmm? Can kappa be zero? No. Right. This expression says uh, kappa curvature cannot be zero. You are right then, right? Okay. Is this okay? Okay. All right, then mm, now let's see. Let's get this one. So we have, we can write this one this way. We know that T and B are orthonormal basis. So okay, we can write this one using T and B. N and alpha is minus M, B and B. Because we know that T and B are also normal basis. Okay. We know two of those already. Here, alpha is minus M, that, we, that T is zero. So this is a zero. And what is that? Yeah, right. This is uh, from this expression. We know that that is uh, minus 1 over kappa. Okay? So we have to find uh, this one then. Okay. So to get that one, to get that one, let's use uh, that one. Let's use uh, this one. So alpha is uh, minus m and 
that is, uh, let's replace this by rho. rho. So let's replace that by rho. So this rho is a uh, 1 over curvature, kappa. So let's take, take the derivative. We repeat that similar process. So that is, uh, mm -hmm, that is t dot n plus at n prime. That is uh, minus uh, rho prime. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then t dot n is uh, zero. They are also gonna, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, then what is n prime? Minus kappa t plus tau b. So we have the product of this. Take out minus kappa t, okay, and plus torsion and then b. Then this goes one zero. Why right then? We had that one zero. Okay, so this is zero. Then what? You bring the tau to the other side. Right, it's a minus. You need to find the same row. <coughs> right? Okay. Then we assume what? Tau is non zero. So we can divide it out. So alpha is minus m b. The product of that is minus rho prime and divide by torsion. But we define 1 over torsion as sigma. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you plug that one, then we are done. <coughs> Actually, it's minus rho n. So with that together, I will complete the rho n. That is minus rho prime and sigma b. Okay? Mm -hmm. And actually simple fact, another simple fact is uh, R square is, uh, if you take the dot product of this together, same thing, then that is a uh, radius square. And we know N and B are also one R, so also normal. So R square is uh, one. From that, rho square plus uh, Rho prime sigma squared. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. That's the last one in this section. Two point four. Okay. Then, any question? It's okay. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> All right. Okay. The next one. Next one. We are going to talk about the fundamental theorem of curves. Okay, so this one, uh, existence. Okay. So far, we see. Curvature is a zero. We always assume the regular curve. Okay. Curvature is zero. Then what do you know? Curvature is zero. Yeah. Then alpha is. A we had a proposition before. If curvature is zero, then what do you know about the curve? Hmm? It's, a line. it's a line, straight line. Okay. And torsion is a zero. It's a plane curve. Okay. 
Then also we know that from this, uh, uh, no, the other one, probably. So if you have a, the ratio of this is constant, huh? then actually is the uh, same here. It's if and only if condition. Then we know alpha is uh, on helix. So uh, it looks like if you know if you have a sum curvature and torsion given, then we can see what the curve is. So actually, is it true? So we have the following fundamental theorem of curves. So here it is here. It says that. Every space curve, every curve, is determined by its curvature and torsion of the position. So here is the statement. determined by curvature and torsion. More precisely, uh, So we have some positive C1 function and continuous function on the open interval AB containing zero. And X0 is a fixed point in RSD. Then DEF is a fixed right-handed orthonormal basis for RS3. Then there exists a unique unique C3 regular curve alpha from this open interval to the R3 such that the parameter is is an arc length from alpha zero and B alpha zero that alpha goes through the X zero is zero 
and t0 is d, n0 is e, b0 is f. And the curvature of the curve, this alpha, <coughs> curvature, this is if just a function. Is a kappa tilde and tau tilde is just function given, right? But there is a unique C3 regular curve defined over AB to R3 such that the curvature of that curve is uh, the one that is given, okay? And torsion of this alpha is the one that given there. So if you, are, if you are given any two functions to satisfying that conditions, then we are able to find a unique curve satisfying the curvature is given that one and torsion is that one. Okay. So we can recover, we are able to find the curve satisfying the two given curvature function and torsion function. That is called the fundamental theorem of curves. Yeah? Then I'm going to skip the proof of that, but if you're interested in proof, then I'll yeah, provide you one then. Okay, I'll send you, make a copy and give you next time. Okay. Then, actually in theory, this is true, we know it's true, mm -hmm. but, but, <laughs> it is very hard to find the one. <laughs> So, if you have some, some function, two functions, then it's hard to find the, the function that has the given those two curvatures and torsion. So, here is a note. Huh? Exist, but it's hard huh? to get such regular curves. Okay. But there are some examples we can work. So here's the example. Let's see this one. Let's work this case. So we are looking for, let's see, let's find uh, some regular curve satisfying the torsion is constant multiple of the curvature. Okay, let's see what that is. Okay, so let's consider parameter t this way. t of s, 0 to s, and curvature. Curvature, let's use some different parameter, sigma, okay. Then, this is positive, you assume the curvature is positive, so if S increases, then this T increases, right? Right? So this is increasing function, so it's an inverse function, I want to one function, so inverse exists, right? Actually DT, DS is, what? Derivative of this with respect to S. K yeah, curvature less than curvature of the curve. Okay, so let's reparameterize everything in terms of this new variable, new parameter t. Okay, so we have uh, big T, big N, and B. So let's take the um, let's consider that one. So we originally used uh, S, okay, so 
but let's change the parameter this way. So what is that? So this is uh, ds ds dt chain rule. So this is uh, curvature and right. Then what is this? What is ds dt then? One over curvature, right? So that cancelled out. So we have n. Okay. Then let's do dn dt. It's the same, same work. dn ds ds dt. Can you feel? Can you find those? So dn ds n prime is. Uh, I raise that. Okay. <laughs> Minus uh, AT plus uh, torsion B, right? Over, 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 over yeah, curvature. So, uh -huh. so KK uh, the, 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 the divided, so that is uh, minus T plus, uh, okay. yeah, torsion over curvature is, uh, we assume, this is a C, so CB. This C is the same C here. Right? Mm -hmm. Then dB dt is, is a minus torsion n, right? And we divide it by, by curvature. So there will be minus C n then. Right? So we change everything in terms of t. Then let's take the one more derivative of this second. So what is the second derivative of this? N double. Let's see. Let's see. N double. So we are using t, okay? So derivative of big T respect to t that is uh, minus n. Plus C is a constant C from that. So derivative will be respect to T is a minus, C. minus a CN. Right. So that is a minus a 1 plus a C square and then. Are you okay so far? Okay. So that means N double second derivative of N vector that equal to minus, uh, let's say, W is uh, 1 plus uh, C squared then. That constant. So that is minus W and then. Actually, it never equals 0. That W is not 0, okay? And positive, actually, the positive, okay? W squared, let's see, W squared, sorry. Let's say this one is W square, right? I don't want to put the square root. Okay. So we have a second order differential equation in terms of n only. So do you remember that one from the E? We used to be a valued function at that time, but it's a vector valued, but it's the same. Characteristic, right? Characteristic equation. Remember that? It's R square plus W square equals zero. So R is plus minus W I then. If you have an imaginary number, uh, solution <laughs> from the characteristic equation, solution is what? N of T is if you have a real part is E to D randa T cosine Wt something, right? And e to d lambda t sine Wt. So we do same way, but here is a purely imaginary. So it's a cosine Wt a constant vector a. Actually, we use a c1 and c2 at the time, but here we use a constant vector plus the sine Wt b for two constant vectors 
A and B. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You okay? Right? Is okay? Okay. Then, and look at that end then. N is, N is DT, DT, T prime. So we know that this is a big T prime from that. So what is T? What is T? We can take an integral of that, right? So big T is the integral to cosine wt dt that a plus the sine mm, oh yeah 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 okay yeah okay integral a yeah, we don't have so one over w sine wt a plus the minus cosine wt b plus constant uh, constant okay c is okay to have a c inside of that one right it's a constant anyway so this is a big t Right? Then what is alpha then? We know that this is a, this is a derivative of a, right? Unit tangent vector of the alpha. So what is alpha then? Integral, right? So integral. So that is a one over w oops, w. Then integral sine w t a minus cosine w t b plus c c t plus d. So we have one more constant. So a b c d. Those are constant vectors. So we have uh, the expression for alpha, but still we don't know what that is yet. We hope that that turns out to be a helix, eh? okay? So we have to go further. That A, B, C, D constant vectors, we know that those are constant, but it's not arbitrary. It's not arbitrary, so we have to figure out what they are. We have to say more about the A, B, C, D, okay? So to get those, uh, mm, mm, uh -uh, I see. Okay, here is that actually alpha we use uh, S. So let's take the integral. If you take the, well, this is unit. Actually, so we have to take, yeah, actually here, integral respect to S. If you take the T, then it's right, but, um, actually, this is not R prime, right? If you use the T, then, we don't know that is a unit. If you use S, then the, 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 if this is S, then alpha, alpha S is the one integral of that, right? So if, if you use, uh, let's say, sorry, arc length S, then there will be an integral of that. So integral of this, there will be 
C S plus D. Sorry. Okay. So then let's figure out that A B C D. So we have D and D T this, and let's take the inner product of this. So that's the derivative of n and n, so it should be zero. So calculation, calculations are very messy, okay? But let's see, d and dt is a one. So here we have this. Take the derivative with respect to t is a minus W sine WTA plus W cosine WT B. Am I right? Mm hmm. Dot W plus W sine WT B. Oh, there is no W for the end, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Then here, if you do it then, so it's a minus uh, A, uh, the, the W sine WT cosine WT. This one, that one. So we have. Uh, a dot A, this, then what? We have a W cosine <laughs> WT sine T. Right? So take up this, then we have a minus. That is B minus magnitude of A squared from this and that one. Then we have W cosine WT squared, uh oh, squared, that one. We have A dot B. Then what? We have a minus sine squared wt and a dot b. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> this is a zero. Then we know this is a cosine to two wt, and this is. A What is sine wt, cosine wt? It's 1 over sine 2 wt. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we know that these are linearly independent function, right? So to get that 0, to get this 0, what do we have then? Then? This has to be zero, this has to be zero. So A, B, that two constant factor we have, that has to be orthogonal, and their length has to be same. Right? Then furthermore, furthermore, if you go back to the end, they, they are orthogonal and their length is the same, right? But we do know that, that n, the principal normal has length. Length? What is length of that? Their length is the same. OK. 
okay and so that should be one right because n if you dot n and n then you have a cosine squared wt a dot a plus uh, sine squared wt b dot b and a b out the one so and then their length is the same so one times uh, length of a or length of b square equal one right okay okay so that length is one okay then so far we can see the a b goes uh, then let's see then we can do the same thing for a t dot n so we have a t there and n there so if you do it then you say more about this okay a and c and b and c are orthogonal okay also length of the t same calculation this is one so we have one plus what is t What is T? Uh, let's see. Yeah, here, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so magnitude is uh, one over W squares, uh, and A A B orthogonal, A C B C orthogonal. So length that one is one. So it says that that vector C there. Actually, I'm sorry for two C's. So this is a vector C, okay? And we have another C in the beginning. Well, let's see. Let's put, yeah, right there, sorry. Okay, so those are, so you know that what the C's are then, okay? So here, if you have a dot product, then the, those are, should be vectors. Okay, that should be equal to 1. So 1 from A and B, so 1 plus C, the product of C and C, there, that should be 1. one you have a 1 over W there, so that should be W squared. Right? Mm -hmm. Then what is W squared there? the right corner <laughs> 1 plus C squares <laughs> right right we set W square this way then so that means uh, that means uh, length of C vector length of C vector is a C okay then, mm -hmm. well, like I can do this. So that means uh, we can say the vector C is uh, C is orthogonal to AB, okay, and length of C is C, okay. So we can say this is C vector is plus or minus C A cross B, the cross product of A and B, right? We don't know which one actually is either plus or minus. But another messy work, okay? Another, actually I don't have a time to finish your, so CT equal N close to CB. And CB is uh, D and DT plus uh, T. So from this work, uh, okay, I, I include this messy work uh, calculation to your one of the homework problem, okay? After this, using this one, we can tell the vector C is uh, positive C and A cross B. Okay, 
So now we have what? So we figure out that this C is this C vector is a cross product of this A and B. So we can write the curve this way then. 1 over omega integral 0 to s sine what sine wt dt minus okay that's the a component a direction and 0 to s cosine wt dt then c this is constant c then ah uh, sorry 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 then this one the s okay then plus a constant vector d then well we can put this one as a, this way then not bracket anymore so this is a this is b and this is c direction okay and i'm sorry that c has a constant c so this is, should be constant c okay so now what do you see we start with this condition and we want to find the expression for the alpha only using this ratio, this condition. Then what do you see? We have some function of S, another function in the XY. Now we see CS. So do you see that one is the Alex? Right? Yes. So, like this is simple example is a lot of work, uh, right? It's uh, yeah, Alex, uh, along this yeah, this axis. Okay. So that's the one example we can work on, but for other cases, uh, actually, that yeah, it's possible. Then. Okay. So that's it. That I want to show you this example. Okay. And okay, that's it for today. Then.